I am a banker by profession. That's what I do for a living. I also trained as a lawyer. My journey with fibroids has been a very long one. Um, the first diagnosis of fibroid I had was sometime in 2001. I had um, a first surgery in 2001. Um, in 2010, I was told there was a regrowth of the fibroids and I had to go for a second surgery, a myomectomy. And in 2011, again, I had to go for a third myomectomy. So it's been a long and tortuous journey that I've had with fibroids. But that progressed after the first fibroid. By the time I was diagnosed again of fibroids in 2011, it had progressed to serious and debilitating pains. So it was not just that I had um, prolonged and heavy bleeding. It was also that I had to deal with debilitating pains that, you know, completely altered a whole lot of things about my life. The symptoms had a very significant impact on the quality of my life. Um, so I basically needed to live on pain relievers for at least two weeks out of the four weeks that make up a month. Not even just any pain reliever, it had to be Cataflan. That was the only one that worked for me. So I had to continue with the pain relievers for at least seven to 10 days, depending on, on how long the period lasted in a particular month. It wasn't even possible to miss a dosage because the pain wouldn't let you do that. But the fact that, you know, every other thing about my life was also affected. I wasn't a happy person. I couldn't um, engage in several activities that others would ordinarily engage in. I couldn't travel. I had to plan all my travels to fall within the, the two weeks um, free period that I had, you know, in every month. Um, I couldn't just do several activities. I, could, I wouldn't be in church if I was bleeding. I wouldn't attend the wedding, no matter how close or important the relationship was to me, if I was bleeding, because I, I couldn't face the inconvenience of having to be out of my home um, or out of my office for long hours. For the treatment of my fibroids, I, I never really believed in any of those herbal supplements that you, know, you find advertised here and there or that people will usually recommend. I always believed that I needed a surgical solution to the problem, so each time a diagnosis was made, I opted for myomectomy. Um, until the fibroid regrew after the 2011 surgery and then I said to myself I was down with myomectomy I wasn't going to subject my body to a fourth myomectomy I didn't have the faith I didn't have the confidence to go through that again so that was when I started seeking other options other than surgery but when the fibroid regrew um, after the 2011 surgery I, I for the greater part considered a hysterectomy I thought that was just the option that was best for me at that point. This condition really made me to, to go into a lot of research, um, personal research. Um, it was also in the course of you know, making those inquiries, I found out about uterine fibroid embolization. But at the time I, I knew about fibroid embolization, I didn't know it was an option that was available in Nigeria. I had made inquiries from India and I had been told, I had been given the cost, I had been told what the procedure entailed, I had, I had advanced my discussions with them and I was you know, making preparations for, for travel but um, a couple of friends here and there thought that India wasn't a good option and that if I needed to, to you know, travel out of the country for medical help I should consider other options other than India. So I, was, I decided to engage my friends that live in America and the UK. The process for my procedure at URK, I think it would be a good starting point to state that I never had any historical knowledge of this hospital. I had not heard about the hospital. Um, when I finally 
found that it was possible to have the procedure in Nigeria. I was actually, it was actually supposed to happen at a hospital facility in Abuja. And I had started having discussions with the hospital. And so the hospital required me to run um, a MRI, um, the Ura Care representative. He said, oh yeah, we have a machine here. It's just the normal MRI he will usually require the patient to, to go for, or yeah, to produce the results. We had some good discussion. He explained what the procedure entailed, explained how you know the procedure was going to be carried out, and then told me to go for, for, for the MRI. So the result was sent to him and then he analyzed the result and said from what he um, saw from my result that I was a good candidate for the procedure. Um, on the day of the procedure, I came in here in the morning. I, I didn't have to sleep in the hospital um, overnight. I think by my estimation, it wouldn't have lasted more than an hour. It was a painless procedure to say the least. And then I got wheeled um, into the, the, the ward. I felt the pain after I, ha I woke up and then the pains went on but the, do the nurses were you know available and, deli and delivered the pain medications as instructed so I wouldn't say the pains were unbearable. I left the hospital the very next morning and when I got home the pains continued for a few more days I will say three to four more days or five more days and then the pains completely disappeared. After the um, procedure, I stayed home for, I think, two weeks before I returned to work. And then I had my first period at the end of that month. Um, the experience with the first period was good. Um, for the first time in several years, I didn't have any single pain. I didn't have to rely on any pain medication. I didn't have to get um, cataflan for the very first time in several years. I was unbelievable. The first period was still long, it still, I, I still took about seven days. It was still heavy, but there was no single pain. By the time I moved into the second month, the, the period was still long, but there was no single pain. By the third month, um, my period gradually um, reduced, the, the intensity of the period reduced, the number of days um, uh, reduced from seven days um, um, to um, four days. As far as I was concerned, I had got my healing because for me, the major concern was the pain. I could deal with the prolonged period, I could deal with the other symptoms, but it was just the pain that was, you know, a big concern for me. And as far as that was off, I, I thought I could deal with the other symptoms. And endothelin aloe was always available each time it was in the country to, you know, monitor progress of, of, of my healing. I will highly recommend fibroid embolization to anyone who's had challenges with fibroids. My name is Dr. Hamed Nina Lowo. I'm a vascular and interventional radiologist. And one of the procedures that I offer is a procedure called uterine fibroid embolization, which is a minimally invasive uh, treatment method to treat fibroids without surgery. I originally met Mrs. Mrs. Suyu um, in April of last year via video consult while I was in America. And um, at that time, uh, she had been going through debilitating pain and heavy bleeding uh, because of uh, fibroids. Um, she had a history of going through three uh, different myomectomies in the past. A myomectomy is a procedure where only the fibroids are removed and at this point was uh, frustrated with the process of uh, going through multiple surgeries. At that time she was being offered a procedure called a hysterectomy which is a surgical procedure to completely remove a uterus and she was uh, not willing to go through another surgery. Uh, she talked to me on video consult uh, about uterine fibroid embolization uh, we talked to her about the process. She was actually considering going to India or America for the procedure, uh, but following the consultation process and the fact that we, we told her that uh, this is being done in Lagos at Eurocare Multi-Specialty Hospital, she had uh, confidence in the process and signed up uh, to get, undergo the procedure. She had a relatively uncomplicated procedure, lasted less than an hour. Um, she went home the, the next day on follow-up, she did let me know that a pain was completely gone. She did have some bleeding that was still persistent. Um, and as I tell most of my patients, we could have some bleeding persistent for one or two more periods for about 20% of patients. However, by the third month, 
she started to see a decrease in her bleeding also, but most importantly for her, she was on a significant amount of pain medicines and at least one month after the procedure, she did not have to take any of those pain medicines anymore and there was a significant improvement in her quality of life.